Joining us now is Ojinika Jinik Sokpe with stories trending around the world with an Anogo Green hairstyle. You are too excited. Happy Friday. TGIF. How are you? How are you? We're fine. Showakba. Showakba. Dr. Rufai. Hi, Aya. Good morning. How are you this morning? I'm doing good. I know you guys had an exciting moment in Davos. Yes. I saw that. It was beautiful. That was a highlight of today's show. This woman was cracking up. She was almost in tears. That was a beautiful moment. The cold was plenty. Yes. Like yes, they should come back to our warm Nigeria. Yeah. Well, all right, let's begin what's trending. In the wake of the scandal rocking the Humanitarian Affairs Ministry, which led to the suspension of its minister, Dr. Beta Edu, and the investigation of her predecessor, Sadia Umar Farouk, a video of the chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Ola Olukwayode, when he appeared before the Senate for screening, has surfaced online. In the video, the chairman said the sum of 2.9 trillion naira meant for some government projects was diverted for personal use by contractors between 2018 and 2020, adding that the stolen funds during the period under review would have been useful for government projects if the anti-corruption agency under the past administration had prevented the funds from being diverted. I did a survey between 2018 and 2020 of 50 entities in Nigeria, 50 entities, both human and corporate entities, between 2018 and 2020. And I picked just one scheme, one species of fraud, which is called contract and procurement fraud. And I discovered that between 2018 and 2020, three years, Nigeria lost 2.9 trillion. 2.9 trillion. Now, when I put my figures together, I discovered that this money, if we had saved, if we had prevented it, would have given us 1,000 kilometers of roads. In addition to that, we would have built close to 200 standard schools, tertiary institutions. In addition to that, we would have educated about 6,000 children from primary to tertiary levels at 16 million per child would have delivered 20,000 units of three bedroom houses across the country, and even more. Would have given us a world-class teaching hospital in each of the 36 states of the Federation. This is where we are coming from. This is where we are. Where we are going to go depends on the decision we take this afternoon. Thank you very much. All right, we can see here the EFCC chair during his screening. He has remained resilient. If you recall, he has talked about the fact that he is sparing no one in any of these allegations. No one is above the law. Well, in the meantime, the chairman has also raised the alarm that the quest for bribes by EFCC investigators has become too embarrassing. He made the comments during his New Year address to the agency on Thursday. Ulukayo Day said the major objective of the war against corruption and financial crimes globally is to drive economic development to create job opportunities for the populace, adding that public opinion about the conduct of some EFCC investigators are adverse and called on the investigators to show integrity and discipline. He further warned that he will not hesitate to wield the big stick against any form of infraction by any staff of the commission. Well, all of this is coming as the House of Representatives Public Accounts Committee has ordered the Ministries of Health and the Ministry of Trade, Industry and Investment to refund unutilized funds meant to mitigate the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020. The committee gave the order during its investigative hearing, stating that the total sums, of which amounts to 600 billion naira, have not been utilized. It's very, very, very important um, for those who haven't come and haven't sent in any communication to show that they had a justifiable reason for not coming, we will be taking a position that those issues in investigation are resolved against them. I had it here. I was actually waiting for us to finish so that I would tell you. I've had it ever since that we have 10 billion. But Madam, have you have a submission here. This is your submission. Yes. This is your document. Yes. We are, we are a house that deals with documents. We don't, the oral testimony cannot override whatever is not included here. And in, in the whole of your document, there is nowhere you indicate or indicated that you have a 10 billion naira sitting or lying somewhere then, that has not been used. I, Former permanent secretary and the current permanent secretary are affected by this motion.
to refund the sum of 75 billion naira back to the federal government as COVID-19 intervention fund, which, as far as we are concerned, has not been expended. Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, the Permanent Secretary, is hereby ordered to cause a refund of a sum of 75 billion naira back to the Federation account within seven days and present documents to indicate such a refund on failing. Welcome in development. I mean, you saw there the permanent secretary for the Ministry of Health, Dajum Kachalun, saying that they have 10 billion naira of COVID funds in their account. Just, to know, just so you know, this is not a new investigation. It's been ongoing since 2020. And at this point, we're hearing that 10 billion naira of COVID funds is still there. He's ordered 75 billion to be refunded by January 22nd. Let's see what happens. Yeah, Oju, you know what stuck out to me in this instant was the fact that as she was being questioned, mm -hmm. the 10 billion wasn't written in any of her submissions. Absolutely it was an not. oral submission. Yeah. So that connects it's, it's back to our first story, which is the cost of corruption. Mm -hmm. Or in this instance, it's omission. Let's not call it corruption because this is an ongoing uh, it's story. But the cost of corruption uh, by Olu, Olu, uh, Ola Olukoyede, excuse me. And uh, it, reminds, it reminds me about how much we've normalized what I call contractpreneurs. Yes. There is a holy economy of people whose livelihoods bank purely on waiting for people to come into office so that they can benefit from contract and procurement fraud. We've normalized it. It's become part of our daily living. We know, ah, my man is in office. People have packed up to leave Lagos and relocated to Abuja because their man is in office. And it's unfortunate, and I hope that this doesn't end at revelations. This doesn't end at exposés. I really do hope that what needs to be done happens. The necessary steps are taken in order for us to, to curb this as a norm and a cost of doing business. It's absolutely not a, a norm. It is unfortunate and unacceptable. Before I come to you guys, the former president of the Nigerian Bar Association, Olisa Agbakuba, who was on our nightly news program, Primetime, charged President Bola Ahmed Tinubu to summon the courage to confront Nigeria's social, political and economic problems by embarking on major constitutional reforms. He said Tinubu must crush those against Nigeria's democracy. I will reemphasize that President Tinubu must crush the evil. These are devils that are stalling Nigeria and making us look foolish. He has to crush the people who don't want democracy. Uh, That's my view. All right, I, don't, uh, I don't care if you like it or not. Uh, that is my view. <laughs> I, I know you're not happy I'm using strong words, but this is the time to use strong words. Yeah, uh, uh, democracy or not democracy, we have suffered enough. Uh, uh, we have suffered enough in this country. Yeah. Uh, How can I pay my driver 100,000? No, please listen to me. How can I pay my driver 100,000 for him to buy a rice of 60K? Because we have people in Abuja stuffing all our money. The nonsense must stop. The nonsense must stop. And the president of Nigeria must be the person to lead this crusade in the context of a constitutional process. That is what I'm saying to you. SAN Olisa Agbakuba couldn't have said it any better. The nonsense has to stop. Oji, yes. The nonsense, the wickedness. Yes. The French will call it Marchand. The madness must stop in this country. Absolutely. Because you see, the madness too that also makes it very funny when you see family relative of the president going on an official assignment with him must stop. The madness of the entourage must stop. The madness of deficit, but humongous budget deficit and printing of money through ways and means must stop. The madness of corruption. Apparently, all the monies that we took, you know what hurts me the most about that money? We took those monies at loan, special drawing rights. We printed money. That's what's causing inflation today. And people have the nerve to steal it. Look at that person talking at the House of Rep. She wasn't even decent enough to prove all the money. She said it on interrogation. That madness must stop. The contract scam must stop. Ugozi Okonje Wella wrote a full book on contract scam. There's a part of it called judgment debt, where people were ensure that government does not do the contracts so that they can take government to court. It's civil servants too that will take government to court, connive with the contractors, collect judgment debt for them. There's one of them. Secondly, then the contract scam itself. They go there for the contract. They inflate the contract. That one, they get 20 or 30%. They inflate the contract. They don't even get to do it in the end. 
The third one, they deliberately stall on the contract. They do not do it so that at the end of the year, they will use Magumago Mago to retire the money to their own pockets and private accounts. That's part of the things you are seeing that's happening now that is coming to light. That's why you see that COVID-19 money, when people were suffering and crying for palliative, come on, it do me! They couldn't give them but billions and government posts. Yeah. And if they didn't ask questions, they were looking for a way to colobi that money and put it in their colobi pocket or send it abroad in their accounts. The madness must stop. The madness in the civil servant. That's what the EFCC chief is saying. The madness yes. of EFCC interrogators must stop. 2.9 trillion in three years. I've, and that's why I've always argued against a big budget. Because we still are wasting money. Nigeria does not need a 28 trillion budget. Yes, Half of the money is stolen. Yeah. If 2.9 trillion can be stolen as a, in a space of three years, look at the Naira to the value dollar. Look at the price of that 2.9 trillion. What it can do over 1,000 kilometers of road. Healthcare institution and all of that. And people do not see the dividend of democracy because some people are stealing the money and you're giving humongous money. Just cut the budget so that we have a small amount, then we all share that amount and we have financial fiscal discipline. Because we are printing money, we are wasting money, we are stealing the money, and you say people are not. And when we take they say they are emotional, they are emotional. If you don't see the price of destruction in your country and you don't talk about it, you are worse than you fool yourself. Yeah. Because this country has gone down the drain. OG. In the late 80s, they used to make a joke that an allergy from Kotonu said he was giving a Niger his Nigerian babe or girlfriend one million. But the babe did not know that the money is one million CFR. Because one million CFR then was 16,000 Naira. Oji today, CFR is more than the Naira. It is too close to two to one. It's 1 1.6 to one. One million CFR. That used to be 16,000 Naira today. 200,000 CFR is close to 500,000 Naira. And we are sitting on the keg of gunpowder. We are not telling ourselves the truth. I feel pain for this country. Yeah. I feel pain for this country. Yeah. And they don't even listen when we say these things. Yeah, I mean, this is outrageous, Ayo. I mean, I, you can hear Rufai so emotional here. I mean, the AFCC chairman raised that alarm back in October, talking about contract fraud because that's what i call it contract yeah. Yeah. fraud and we see these things we see the covid 19 funds being diverted into personal accounts and now we are hearing that even our ministers are part of that fraud and nothing is being done all right so i, I also like what i think we buy called a contract pineal it's so bad that some people even with appointments you have to even track it from appointing um, you know, personnel into certain ministries, departments, and agencies because they are strategically put in there to strategically give out contracts to strategic people just to propagate this corruption that has Absolutely. outlived different administrations. And the truth is that a lot of people know these things, but we've just endured, we've just kept at it. And that's why maybe we started to, I love what the EFCC chairman, by the way, kudos, he started on yes. a fantastic note. Um, the chairman, Olu Olukoyede, has started on a fantastic note. And I'm hoping that he'll continue, because usually they start well, but along the line, some things happen. And he's, he cited the reason that some of the investigators themselves are complicit. Yes. They are compromised. They collect, they are the ones sometimes that will go and ask for a Bible, I'll help your case. So maybe the first thing, and I'm glad that he's starting from his own house, to sanitize the EFCC internally. He said he's not going to stop at wielding the big stick to earn officers so I hope I hope he does that I hope he makes examples of some of these Absolutely. investigators and that he acts as a deterrent to others who would want to do that now going back to the cost of work you know when he was saying those things the, the moment as for everything he said my heart would shake 1,000 kilometers of road mm -hmm. yet people are dying on our Nigerian roads because of accidents caused by bad roads so what I'm saying is that it's not about stealing money alone. So even speaking to the thieves themselves who think, oh, nobody's been hurt. People are dying as a result of corruption. Corruption is one of the biggest bane of this nation. He talked about 20,000 units of bed spaces, I believe, in maternity centers. Yet we have very high matern uh, maternal mortality, mortality rates. rates. So it means that in, the, in three years, there could have been a d significant change in that industry. He talked about a world-class hospital in every state of the Federation. Yet, we keep exporting healthcare because we can't afford... There are, no, there are hospitals that are all world-class. Not many. You can count on your fingers how many world-class hospitals. So they are not just stealing our today. They are stealing the future of Nigeria. And that is why I'm hoping that the EFCC as an agency will clamp down on corruption. Beyond the speaking... What we've asked previous chairman is this.
give us good convictions. Yes. Don't give us the little ones that, okay, this person fraud. Yeah, those ones exist. Give us the past government officials, like these PSCs who are not able to account if they are found culpable, if they are not able to account for the monies in their account. Do you know what that 10 billion was meant for? To build a vaccination center during COVID. Do you know what they should have even done? They should have probed the amount of money used for a vaccination center for what would have been probably a, because I mean, maybe they would have converted the building, you know, because a vaccination at the time was needed because there was a pandemic. Following that, what would, was there a game, a plan for what they would use the building for was it going to become a world-class health center for 10 billion naira and then so not only did they keep the money they deprived the people mm -hmm. of having a vaccination center so these monies are supposed to be i don't agree that they should cut down the budget i think that the budget is insufficient if you look yes. at the size of the population yeah. the only problem that we have is that it's not being used for the people yes. it's not even enough if you look at um, money allocated to education not enough mm -hmm. to health not enough so what is not enough you are stealing from it and right. stealing from the people let me reiterate ayo it's 600 billion, 600 billion naira that has not been accounted for. We'll wait for the investigation. Shall we share some cherry news? Yes. Well, the Minister of State for Labor and Employment, Inkiruka Onyejocha, on Thursday revealed that the federal government will soon pay the 35,000 naira wage arrears it owes workers. The provisional wage was meant to be paid to workers for six months to alleviate the hardship caused by the removal of petrol subsidy. I say this is cherry news because we have been waiting for this. Again, it sounds like an assurance, but it looks like there's some sort of light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> well, let's take the story highlighting David Akamu, a University of Lagos graduate who emerged with a 5.0 cumulative great point average in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. His accomplishment was celebrated during Unilag's 54th Convocation Ceremony, where he received numerous awards for his exceptional academic performance. Davy's success serves as an inspiration, showcasing the significance of dedication and excellence in education. I mean, I, I want us all to applaud this. This is completely amazing. I mean, 5.0. 5, but I mean, this man will graduate and be in Nigeria. We are hoping that, you know, he's not just going to be one of those. We're calling on, I believe he's in Lagos, Lagos State yes. Governor, to look at this a student at this point. Well, in the meantime, let me just play a video of this young youth copper who actually made me cry. She, you know, <laughs> went to her father when she graduated, when she finished youth service. Let's pull up that video. A heart to the city streets, we begin to feel the fire. We rise like tall buildings as the chemicals they take us higher. The night's young and it's just begun as she puts her hand in mine. We wanna chase the night. I should highlight the story because her father did an amazing job, sold everything to send her to school. And this was a way for her to honor her father. I thought it was such a beautiful story, a story of resilience. Shall we uh, head over to Davos now? Where Vice President Kashim Shatima, who is in Davos for the World Economic Forum during an interview with Dr. Ruben Abati on Thursday, said that the Nigeria delegation did not go to Davos to beg for funds, rather that the delegation went to dialogue with investors on a fair and balanced, mutually beneficial relationship, and that Nigeria is not a poor nation, eliciting reactions. Let's take a look before we take some reactions. We are not a poor nation by any standard. We are not a poor continent. We want to deal with people on a pedestal of equality. We do not come to the West with a begging bowl, no. 
We want to deal with them on mutually beneficial terms because ours is the richest continent in the world. The whole country also of Europe, their resources are not up to the resources in the Democratic Republic of Congo. This is why I said we carry our poverty with dignity. We are not here. Wherever we go, we go to have mutually beneficial relationships with uh, Western nations and with Western entities. Well, I think he spoke very well. I think um, a lot of Nigerians um, kind of uh, misunderstood his point here. I think he was talking in terms of resources that Nigeria and Africa at large are rich with resources. But let me take a rhetoric from, you know, some Nigerians on social media, which is almost a general rhetoric. This is from uh, Hudi, who wrote, Wrong. Nigeria is a very poor nation. As a matter of fact, the poverty capital of the world. Why? Because how poor a nation is cannot be measured by the natural resources in it, but how poor the people are. The same way a professor might have so much knowledge and still be poor, a country can have riches underground and still forever be poor. Wisdom does not only cover knowledge, but the application of it, which amounts to understanding, Rufai, a minute before True, we take our final, spot on. final Nigeria story. is potentially rich does not mean that it's been able to make that potential kinetic. Life is not about what you have, but what you do with what you have. People go to school to get a degree. Mm -hmm. Why? So that they can use the degree in exchange for a job. You can as well get that university degree and decide to sit in your house and not use it for anything. Mm -hmm. That's the way life is. So how can our leaders activate the potential of the resource we have mm -hmm. to make us rich? Yeah. In conclusion, Darren Asamoglu, the man that wrote the book Why Nations Fail, was asked a question. Why do nations fail? Mm. His answer was, nations fail because their leaders make them fail. Mm. The reason why Nigeria has been failing, the reason why Nigeria is poor, monetary terms today, is because of our leaders. Well, all right, Rufai, your opinion is as well valid. Shall we take our final story? Still in Davos, Switzerland, where the Nigerian delegation hosted a Nigeria night showcase for the World Economic Forum, featuring a display of Nigerian food and culture. Nigeria's Vice President Kashim Shatima was seen in a video that made the rounds on Wednesday, dancing with his ministers at the Cultural Night. This time, he's seen dancing with the Director General of the World Trade Organization, Dr. Ngozi okonjo -Iwela. Let's take a look. <laughs> All right, Vimbai, we are seeing Ngozi Okonjo Ewela dancing now. Yesterday it was uh, Kashim with his ministers. We yes. showed that video. It was the same night, yes. but we're seeing her in her glorious hair tie dancing absolutely. beautifully. Beautifully. And I just want to make the point that, yes. you know, when you look at uh, Western countries, deals are sealed on the golf course. Yes. In the, uh, African style, we can seal our, go our, our deals during an OMBE. Yes. Nothing takes <laughs> away from the fact that there's serious business happening. And this is the environment where many, many deals are brokered. So it doesn't take away away from the seriousness and the commitment to making sure that something tangible comes out of this outing. I hope you all are going to have your dancing shoes. Both of three yeah. of us are head ties, so we can look like Ngozi Okonjo <laughs> and dance as well. I'd like to thank you all for your great analysis as always on What's thank Trending you. and TGIF. Happy Friday. Well, that's all I have for you on What's Trending today. I'll see you all next week. <laughs>